Ali Abdul has become such an important leader in the creator economy over the last couple of years. Not only has he built this audience of 3 million subscribers, all that stuff, but much more significantly, he's become a, a go-to creator for other creators when it comes to getting advice and inspiration. And occasionally we'll see these creators, creators, or like your favorite influencer's favorite influencer. When we do see people like this, it's really important to pay attention because the level of impact, the level of influence they then have is so, so huge. I'm lucky enough to run a company called 16th. We're the creator management company that looks after Ali. We also look after lots of other amazing creators like V and Jack and Carmen and Lucy and lots of other really, really great creators. But today I want to dive deeply into Ali Abdul's success. Why is he successful? Specifically, I want to show you the key decision he made early, early on that has helped him get millions and millions of subscribers, 200 million views on YouTube, and he's made millions of pounds in revenue along the way. So I'm gonna dive deep into what this decision was, and in doing so, I'm actually gonna to refer to a couple of different books that I love, and so uh, I wanna give them away. I'll give away a copy of each of them. So all you have to do is comment on the video within the first two weeks of uploading, and we'll pick two winners. Let's get stuck in. When you think of Ali Abdul, I think it's easy to think of the theme education, whether it's his like first tutoring business, to helping people get into Cambridge, to his Cambridge vlogs, to his study with me content, his courses, to his productivity advice, to his finance advice, like all of it is about educating. And so I really strongly associate Ali Abdul with education. When I, when I sat down with Ali, I asked him about what role has education played for him as a creator. And so I was, I was really, interested when he like defaulted to teaching as being the interpretation of the word education rather than learning. Ali, I want to talk to you about being an educator. If I think about you as a creator, yeah. like education has really been at the core of it. That's my jam. It's your jam, right? Yeah. The love of teaching came from when kids in my class would ask me to explain stuff to them. Because I always did reasonably well in exams and I'd be like, oh, well, it works because of blah, 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 blah. And they'd be like, oh, that's cool. I get it now. And I think it was that moment of like, I get it now. That's like the addictive feeling mm. um, of, of teaching. You, you're an older brother, right? Yes. Did you ever did you ever play the role of a teacher with your brother growing up? Apparently so. My mum was, was telling us the other day, apparently I used to set my little brother homework, like sums <laughs> to do, and he would like do them. And he would sometimes be like, oh, at least made me do these 10 sums, but I can't do them. <laughs> and my mum would be like, wait, what? <laughs> like, how is he making you do these 10 sums? <laughs> it's like a very weird form of <laughs> Yeah, <bullying>. exactly. <laughs> so the key takeaway here is that very early on, Ali identified, whether it was deliberately or not, he identified that education is very important to him. It's something he feels very strongly about, something that he's somewhat gifted in. He's had a lot of exposure to for a long, long time. And so again, whether it was deliberate or not, Ali picked that as a central theme to his, to his uh, career as a creator and to his business around it. And you can see that strung as a thread through all of the things he's been doing over the last decade or so or more. He's been absolutely unwavering about creating content that, that is centered around this theme of education. And so the efforts that he puts in are being compounded because he's been doing it for so long. And this compounding over time is really what, what we're, we're seeing over these last few years. And we've seen Ali really grow exponentially and really separate himself from the pack. I believe it's because of this deep focus, this continued focus around something um, and this compounding effect. Uh, this is a really good point, actually. So, uh, I mean, the education decision was somewhat intentional in the sense that, like, I intended to go down that route, but unintentional in the sense that, like, I didn't feasibly think I could succeed as an entertainment YouTuber. And I think, weirdly, it's so much easier to succeed in education because you're deliver you're like actively showing up and providing value. Like right now, we're in the midst of with a team filming a course on how to use Notion. I don't need to be entertaining for that. I don't need to do anything particularly fancy. I just need to essentially explain the thing that's in my head around how to use the sick app, which is called Notion. Um, and I think from what I've seen, a lot of creators that lean into education, they have a much easier time of coming up with ideas and making content consistently, but it's really hard to be entertaining on camera. I'm so jealous of the people who manage to do it well. I'm nowhere near clever enough or funny enough or entertaining enough for that. So I just, I just lean into education, but otherwise, would, would really recommend educational stuff for, for other creators. My second point now is really about leadership and culture building. So the first point was really about how this decision has impacted Ali's content, but this is really gonna be talking about how that decision has impacted his business, his leadership and his culture that he's building. I do have a fun story to illustrate this, but, but to, be, to make a general point clear, I see creators as community leaders. They identify these funny little subcultures on the internet um, and, and they, they participate as a community member until they become a leader of that community. And so if you look at your favorite creators, really they are leaders of their sub-communities in which they operate. But anyway, let's park that. I wanna talk about Ali and how, he's, how he is um, 
weaving education into his own company's culture. So a few, uh, I guess it was a couple months ago now, I went into Ali's office. We had a meeting. It was towards the end of the day. So um, uh, his team were kind of winding up. There was a few people still in the office. Um, but I was, as, I, as I was waiting to, to, to chat with him, um, he, was, he was halfway through a singing lesson. A, a singing teacher had come into the office uh, they were uh, playing like piano and Ali was singing along and, and learning, learning how to sing from this guy. And honestly, it was a kind of weird thing to see. And I asked him about it afterwards. I was like, what was, what was that about? Like, why did you have to do that here now? Um, and he explained, he explained that uh, in large part, it was, it was a very deliberate thing to, to do it right in the middle of the office. There was certainly no effort to hide it. And the reason being is that the reason he didn't want the privacy is to demonstrate to the team that one, getting out of your comfort zone is really important, but also like learning and investing in learning things is really important as well. And this story reminds me of a really wonderful book called Made to Stick. Uh, it's a really good book on communications, on marketing, on leadership in general. Um, but there's two points in the book that this really reminded me. One was that in order to, to make a point stick, uh, something has to be unexpected. Another thing is it has to be concrete. So I think it had six or so of these points, but these are two that, that this like <laughs> singing lesson in the middle of, of the office really reminded me of. So unexpected is like about breaking the pattern, sticking out, getting attention. But the, the attention grabbing thing can't just be arbitrary. It can't just be uh, for fun. It has to be centered around a core important message. And I think doing a singing lesson in the middle of the office uh, is a really great kind of, you can think of it as a, like a stunt to demonstrate the importance of that core message of, of education and of um, learning. So this is where leaders and communications professionals uh, need to make things very concrete and clear in people's minds and not too abstract. Uh, a really famous example was JFK's mission that he set. Uh, he said that the US should commit itself to achieving the goal before the decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. That was concrete, like there was a date set. It was very clear exactly what, what he wanted to see happen. And it was also unexpected uh, because at that point, it wasn't such a normal thing for, for someone to walk on the moon. So it was really great to see Ali put his money where his mouth was. And like on the outside, we see him as this education guy, all that kind of stuff. He seems to be very keen on learning. But actually going under the hood, seeing what he's like in his office with his own team and his own colleagues, um, he's, doing, he's, he's kind of using himself as a way of communicating how important learning is to, to his own company's culture even. Part three, I'm gonna call it Ali's Hedgehog. Uh, so one of my all time favorite business books is this one right here, it's Good to Great um, by Jim Collins. It's a real favorite at 16th actually. And in fact, this was given to me a few Christmases ago from Fan, our head of finance and operations. So thank you, Fan. Um, but it's a real favorite at 16th. And it's just a real seminal business book. It's amazing. Um, what it does, it's like a, it's a study on what makes great enduring companies last and, and outperform their counterparts. So it studies uh, a cohort of companies and they're like clo closest rivals. By doing the study, it determines what other factors, what are the things that the great companies did that separated them from the pack and made them rather than just being good, being great. One of the key findings, one of the key uh, differentiating factors that they found is what Jim Collins calls the hedgehog concept. So this is something that flows deeply from understanding the intersection of the following three circles. Uh, what are you deeply passionate about? What can you be the best in the world at? And what best drives your economic engine? Um, this idea of like a Venn diagram will be really familiar and it's really, really, really simple when he puts it like this. Um, but what, what he argues in the book is that for a company to be great, they need to be focusing on, on stuff that, that fits in the middle of these three circles. What can he be the best in the world at? Well, he's one of the best educational creators on YouTube. So he's doing that. What is he deeply passionate about? He, he, he forced his brother to do homework and like taught his brother without even thinking when he was a kid. Um, and what can fuel his economic engine? Well, I mean, he's making millions of pounds or millions of dollars per year by doing this education stuff. So it's safe to say that Ali's sitting right at that intersection. And not only is this a reason for Ali kind of getting to where he's gotten to today, but it's one of the reasons that I'm so confident that Ali will continue as he has. And really, I think when it's all said and done, I really believe he'll be seen as one of the great creators as opposed to just a good one. Okay, I'm gonna finish up here. To, to, to tie it all together with one key takeaway is that whilst forward motion, whilst testing, whilst moving, activity, just doing stuff as a creator is so important, it is also very important if you wanna set, set yourself up for long-term success, i.e. going past that 15 minutes of fame and reaching your 16th minute, if, you, if that's really what your goal is, I think it pays to self-examine and to really consider what are the things 
that can put me in the middle of those three concentric circles? What are the things, what's the theme that I can talk about in my content that really leverages uh, my uniqueness and my true strength and something that I, I've, I've ideally been doing naturally for a long, long time anyway. In short, what are your deep passions? What are your deep talents? And how can you leverage that in your content? So please, please spend some time uh, examining yourself and, and thinking about what these things are and then importantly, making them a core part of your strategy as a creator. As a reminder, we're giving away those two books, Good to Great and Made to Stick. So do leave a comment below. I'd love to see some meaningful comments. We did a, a video about Jack Edwards and his journey to a million subscribers uh, a few weeks ago. And it was really, really fun to make the video, but what was more fun was reading the comments. It was insane to see uh, the impact he's had on people and your interpretation of, of, of Jack and his journey. So I'd love to, to read some meaningful comments down there. In any case, we'll pick two winners. Uh, we'll send one of you Good to Great and the other one Made to Stick. If you want to see that Jack video, it's a lot of fun. Um, so we'll, we'll link that on the screen as well. Um, I really hope this helps, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See ya.